see that how we can simulate this wave flow and then how we can take protective measure, preventive measure. So, for all those understanding wave is very important and as such we started with what are the different types of wave, uh, how we can classify waves and then as I am just saying that the how the wave propagate that is very important for our various requirement, practical requirement that, that is why the speed of wave propagation is also necessary and there comes the term that we call as celerity. Well, what we mean by celerity is that it is the speed of wave with respect to the fluid media. Well, uh, if we just simply say that celerity is the speed of the wave, then it is not complete because we need to say that it is in reference to the fluid media. If the fluid media is it at rest, then of course the speed of the wave, absolute speed of the wave and celerity will be same. But if the fluid is also moving and then over that fluid the uh, wave is moving, then celerity is the speed of the wave with respect to the fluid media. And for analyzing these wave, say uh, what is uh, the celerity, to have an expression for the celerity. When we try to analyze it at unsteady flow, we face some complexity. And this unsteady flow, therefore, we try to convert to an equivalent steady flow, so that it become convenient for our analysis. And last class, we did so, uh, how we can, uh, we could see how we can convert this to a equivalent unsteady flow and we are starting from uh, equivalent steady flow and we are starting from that in this class. Well, say this is a wave forming here a solitary wave single wave and the bed is there and by uh, say uh, and let us first consider that this is a steel water maybe in a tank and by moving a paddle we have created a wave a single wave is moving like that and it is moving with a speed c well and this is a unsteady flow this is a unsteady flow <coughs> Now, to convert this to a steady flow situation as I did explain in the last class that like a walker as the belt is moving upstream or say when we walk the belt may move in the opposite direction in a walker and that is why although our uh, that we are walking on a walker, but we are not moving forward and then someone can observe us that how we are behaving when we are walking, but we are in a steady position, we are in a static position. So, that advantage we can have here like the belt move in the opposite direction in a walker, we can put a opposite direction the velocity c which is the actual velocity of the wave. Then what will happen that this is also moving in a velocity c, wave is also moving in a velocity c in this downstream direction and as now this fluid media is moving in the opposite direction with velocity c and wave which was moving in the downstream direction with a velocity c. So, relative velocity of this will become 0 and then it will be remaining in this position and now we can observe it carefully. Well, now let us see how we can analyze it. Say this depth b at this section suppose at this section depth b y and so amplitude of the wave is say this is the amplitude of the wave <coughs> and so what will be the depth here? Depth in the wave portion where we have the wave this will be say y plus a well and when we talk about velocity then c is the velocity at this section say section 1 and if I talk about the section 2 then what will be the velocity say velocity is v because this velocity will not be equal to the velocity c because depth here is change. So, let us write this velocity as v. Well, now we can write a continuity equation and from that continuity equation we can find that how we can express this v and c, how we can relate this v and c. Well, how we can write the continuity equation say if we consider this channel to be say rectangular and suppose we are considering unit width of the channel. So, this is okay. let me just write here this is a 
equivalent steady state. And now let us see the continuity equation how we can write say continuity equation. <coughs> between section say 1 and 2, between section 1 and 2 how we can write and that we are writing considering unit width of the section, unit width of the section. Well, we are considering unit width of the section. Then what will be the discharge in continuity equation state that here the discharge and here discharge will be equal, discharge at section 1 and section 2 will be equal, fine. Uh, now discharge is equal to the velocity at this point 1, section 1 and the area, area is equal to y into its width. In fact, if we consider width then width will be coming, but we are considering width to be equal to 1. So, it will be c into y. So, we, what we can write that c into y is equal to here we are talking the velocity as v. So, v and depth here is equal to y plus a, y plus a. And from this what we can write that v is equal to c y divided by y plus a. Okay. Uh, let us keep this expression here and now we can write another expression. This is from continuity equation we are getting this relation that is B we can express in this form. Well, but we can have another expression uh, from the consideration of uh, say energy equation. Now, what will be the energy at this point? It will be y1 plus that means at section 1 it will be y1 plus sorry y we are writing y, y plus c square by twice z. And here because velocity is c here and here it will be y plus a plus v square by twice c and let us write that expression. Well, and you can write that energy equation <coughs> energy equation between section 1 and of course, when we are writing energy equation between section 1 and 2 and we are saying that energy at this section and that section are equal, what we mean that there is no energy loss in between. That assumption is in here and there. Well, now let us write that expression say y plus c square by twice g. That means v square by twice v means velocity square by twice g. This is equal to depth in the section 2 is y plus a plus say v square by twice c. Okay, let me write one step v square by twice c. Now, what this v is? We know that v is equal to c then y by y plus a. So, we can just replace it in this form that is y plus c square by twice z is equal to y plus a plus you can write that c square this in place of c square by y square by y plus a whole square. So, so v square we can write that v square by twice z will be and v we can write c square into y square by y plus a whole square. <coughs> okay. uh, well, this is the expression and from this let us try to write because our interest is to get an expression for c. And here what is not known and what we want to try is the C and what is our unknown thing is Y, A here the amplitude. And uh, at the same time this expression we are writing for a very for a wave where the amplitude is very small. I mean small amplitude wave as we uh, just if we recall our last class then we were talking about one expression that you know, C is equal to root over G Y for rectangular channel we obtained that and that was for small amplitude wave. So, here also we are considering that this depth is uh, considerably large than the amplitude A. Well, let us just separate this term and see how we can write it. This y and y will of course get cancelled 
and let me write first a in terms a is equal to then c square by twice this c square by twice this here so we can bring c square by twice z and then we can write 1 minus say y by y plus a whole square well and this can be written as say let us break up y c square by twice z our intention is to see that if because in the expression of c in fact we do not have the a term root over say g y that was that that's what that's what we got in the last class so let us see by we are starting from the first principle and we are trying that yes if, if we can get this expression and here we do not have a a term so let us see how we can do that and this we can write say y plus a whole square and then this will be say we can break up y square plus twice a plus uh, twice a y y square plus twice <coughs> a y plus a square then minus y square well here we are in a position to simplify now well so what we can do that from here let us write one expression for c so c is equal to we can write that c is equal to <coughs> twice g a will be coming c square let me write c square is equal to twice g a and then this will be just we can write in the reverse direction uh, reciprocal of this one this will be say y square plus twice a y plus a square this is there and here what we will be having this and this is getting cancelled already and here we have twice a y plus a square. So, that twice a y plus a square we can write here as a keeping common and we are writing twice y plus a. <coughs> well, now this a and this a we can cancel at this point and let us see how we can write this expression. Well, so we can write c square is equal to now root over twice g twice z and entire things we can put under root sign root over twice z and then here it will become say y square plus twice a <coughs> then twice y plus a let me start from this expression again y square plus twice a y plus a square divided by a twice a plus a this a and a is getting cancelled so what we are writing that twice z and in this part we are writing that expression well plus a square well <coughs> so now here as we know that a square is say a itself is very small so this a square term we can put equivalent to 0 or say it is negligible. So, if it is negligible, now what we can write that c, c is equal c square, no, it is c because we have written already in terms of root over. So, c is equal to say our target is to get this term g y. So, we are writing g y means from here we are bringing a y common, we are bringing a y common. here in fact we had a term a y a y plus a square right so y we are bringing common and 2 we are taking to that side so what we can write root over g y then here we can write so as 1 y has come so it will become twice y 2 is going inside and then plus 4 a 2 is going and this is coming so it will be twice y plus a well now this we can further simplify in a way that this is equal to root over g y and let me write it in this form that twice y plus a fine here also let me write twice y plus a then in fact we need to write plus trice a we need to write plus trice a well so this twice y plus a twice y plus a that we can have 1 and this will become trice a by this expression and so forth. 
let us write c is equal to root over g y then <coughs> we can write root over 1 plus thrice a by twice y plus a. Now, this expression thrice a, so a is very small and here in the denominator we have twice y. So, it is quite a large expression and to, as y is very large than uh, as compared to a, so it, this expression will become a very small term divided by a very large term. So, this we can now neglect. So, if we neglect this term say as a is very very small as a is very very small as compared to y therefore, 3 a by twice y plus a is say negligible is negligible. And now, just neglecting this part it will become c is equal to root over g y well. So, uh, that is the expression that we can derive what we got in our last class uh, again starting from the first principle we could see that for a small amplitude wave uh, we can have the expression for c as root over g y and if it is a, a suppose non uh, rectangular channel then what we do that y will not represent these things properly. So, what we write that c is equal to root over g d what d is d is the hydraulic depth d is the hydraulic depth. So, uh, using this hydraulic depth in fact, for rectangular channel this will become y, but for trapezoidal channel it will be a by t. So, using this expression also we can get the value of c. Well, so, after that let us see that uh, well for a wave of this type for a wave of this solitary wave of this kind we can have an expression for c but if we have a surge if we have a surge and how to analyze this surge whether the c value will be uh, same as uh, or the same expression whether we can use or not well uh, that first we should know what is surge this is also in unsteady flow this is important uh, I mean uh, important uh, topic that is surge we need to do lot of analysis in fact on charges and but here we will be just doing some limited exercise on surge that you can see that surge is a moving wave front that brings about an abrupt change in the flow depth of the channel. So, basically uh, what we mean by surge is that say this is the bed and normal flow is suppose moving here and somehow a wave is coming like that. It is a moving wave front that is why we call this as a wave front, this wave front and say so then it is moving. So, this water is moving like that otherwise also and then we have a moving wave front. This wave front is moving with a velocity say v w this wave front is moving with a velocity v w and this can be uh, this we refer as a surge. In fact, uh, it can be in the other way also say uh, your water level is here water level is here and water itself is moving in this direction suppose and somehow due to closure of gate the you have suddenly closed the gate. So, water level here is rising and then the wave can be moving in the opposite direction also. This is say wave moving upstream and this is a wave moving downstream. So, whatever may be the situation we call such moving wave front which is moving uh, and creating a abrupt change in the depth. See depth earlier was like this and there is a abrupt change. If the depth changes gradually like this then we will not call this as a charge, but here depth is changing abruptly and that is why we call this as a charge and a surge and so this surge also we can express in the form of uh, say equivalent steady state for its analysis. Well, let us see how we can represent this in the form of a equivalent uh, flow. Well, let us consider this one 
any one we can consider, but let us consider this one. Suppose this is say 1 and this is section 2. So, say 1 and 2. Uh, why we are considering? Because this is both in the same direction, here it is in the opposite direction that will uh, give us an opportunity to handle a case where the flow and waves are moving in the opposite direction. Uh, till now, we have not discussed that sort of situation. So, suppose the velocity here is v1 and velocity here will be changing. Velocity here means in the entire section say v2. Well, now vw is the velocity which is moving in the opposite direction. This is a unsteady situation at the next moment of time uh, this wave will be moving further, this wave will be moving further and say uh, we will not find it here. So, let us see how we can do this to keep in a steady position. Well, what we can do in this we can apply an additional velocity in the opposite direction to the speed of the wave. Well, so please just see we are meaning that opposite direction to the speed of the wave, but this speed of the wave is not the celerity. Celerity will be the relative speed. So, we, are, we need to apply a velocity in the opposite direction to the speed of the wave. Otherwise, it is moving with a velocity v1. Now, if we apply another velocity say vw, if we apply another velocity say vw in this part, then two tail velocity at this point will become vw plus v1 and here also it will become v2 plus vw and then velocity of this in this direction will become 0 because it is moving in this direction it is and then at that is why the this things is not in a position to move further it will be remaining in the same position well. So, let us represent this and let us see how we can derive okay I am now having this portion and this equivalent steady state position we can keep here we can draw here. So, it will be like this. Now, we have here the velocity will be v1 plus vw and here the velocity will be v2 plus vw and of course, there will not be any velocity of the wave, it is not moving rather. So, this is basically we can say equivalent steady situation. <coughs> well, now again for this surge just like we were writing earlier, we can write continuity equation and momentum equation. So, continuity equation we can write here say continuity equation and let us put some depth value here. Say depth here is y 1 and depth here is say y 2 ok, y 2. Well, <coughs> now what is continuity equation? So, again considering unit width of the channel, considering unit width, we should mention this one, considering unit width. Okay. Uh, this will become say y 1 into v 1 plus v w is equal to y 2 into v 2 plus, sorry it is not v 3, it is v w v 2 plus v w. Well, <coughs> so that is our continuity equation and uh, this continuity equation can give us or from this continuity equation we can express y 1 in terms of y 2 and we can do those things and then what is this v 1 plus v w that is also interesting. In fact, uh, if from this point when v wave speed or absolute speed of the wave is say it is moving with a speed v w and then the fluid is moving in the opposite direction v 1, then what is its relative speed? Its relative speed will be v 1 plus v w because both are moving in the opposite direction. So, it will be it is in fact it will appear that it is moving faster when v 1 is in this direction v w in this opposite direction. So, wave speed relative wave speed will be 
v1 plus vw and this relative wave speed in fact we call as c so this v1 plus vw is nothing but c well that we can write that equation so continuity equation we have seen and then let me write the continuity equation again and let me keep the diagram here quickly say it is v1 plus vw oh sorry v2 plus vw and this is v1 plus vw that we have and depth here is y1 this is y2 okay uh, now the continuity equation we have already described so y1 plus y1 into <coughs> v1 plus vw is equal to y2 into v2 plus vw now we need to write the momentum equation we need to write the momentum equation so, for momentum equation, for writing the momentum equation, we need to see what are the forces acting. So, the pressure force from this direction and the pressure force from that direction and then the momentum, change in momentum between this point and that point. So, pressure diagram we can draw like that and as we know, we have discussed that part a lot. So, uh, pressure here we can write as half of rho g into y1 square. Okay, because pressure here is nothing but rho g into y1 or w y1. We can write in it as w or we can write rho g. So, writing in any form we can get it say rho g y1 and then area of this triangle will be half of rho g y1 plus uh, multiplied by the way y. So, it will become half of rho g y1 square. So, momentum equation what we can write the force from this side that we can write okay this is continuity equation and now we are writing momentum equation so momentum equation we can write here <coughs> so half of rho g y1 square that is the pressure force from this side and minus half of rho g y2 square that is the pressure force from that side that is equal to change in momentum rather rate of change in momentum so what we can write that mass flowing power unit time and change in velocity so mass flowing power unit time how we can write that discharge flowing power unit time well discharge as it is not changing from here to here where no other flow is being added nor nor the flow has been taken out so we can write it in terms of discharge of this part because this is known to us what is def y2 that is of course known, not known to us because after coming of the wave this is happening but this y1 will be generally known to us so let us write the discharge in terms of this one that we can write discharge in fact is equal to y1 into v1 plus vw is the say velocity and area is actually y1 into width but width is 1 so this is what the uh, volume flowing we can say and then this volume flowing if we multiply it by rho then it become the mass flowing okay so this is what the mass flowing and then v square or say uh, sorry not v square this is the mass flowing and the change in velocity so change in velocity is equal to in fact it is v2 plus w vw minus v1 uh, plus vw so ultimately the resulting will be v2 minus v1 so that is what the change in flow velocity this is our momentum equation well from this momentum equation we can further derive some of the uh, relation uh, i mean which is required for finding the expression for c in case of surge and well before that let us write the expression for c here this is another equation that is c is equal to we have <coughs> we can write that c is equal to say v1 plus vw that we have already explained how it is. So, this is equal to C, celerity C, that is the expression for celerity C. And this expression, uh, celerity C, we can further uh, say starting from the momentum equation, we can derive it in a different form. And let us see how we can do that. Well, uh, now we need to mention one point here that we got one expression for c is equal to root over gy and this equation is called Lagrange's equation of 
celerity. This equation c is equal to root over g y, this equation is called Lagrange's equation of celerity. Well, and now let us see what will be the expression for c in case of surge in terms of y 1 and y 2. Well, in general we can have it as v 1 plus v w, but we then we do not know what is v w and so we need to have it in a different form like that earlier we got in terms of diff y. So, let us see what we can do uh, starting from this again starting from this momentum equation we can write that this is equal to <coughs> say rho we can cancel in each part then let me take common here say half of g then y 1 square say half of g y 1 square if I keep here then it become 1 minus y 1 square by y 2 square well and on this side we can take say y 1 is here and then v 2 minus v 1 is there. So, what is that v 2 is the velocity. So, velocity and this expression actually y 1 plus v 1 plus v w this expression. This expression is nothing but this is showing how much is the discharge. I am writing this as q. This is q means unit discharge because we are talking about discharge through unit width. So, this is equal to q and what is our v 2 or v 1? v 2 is nothing but q by say y 1 because v 2 into y 1 is equal to q, y 2 is equal to q and v 1 is equal to q by y 1 because that, that we know that is again from continuity equation we know that v 1 y 1 is equal to v 2 y 1 that is also known to us. So, in fact, this v 2 can be written as v 2 can be written as q by y 2 means q is equal to v 1 plus v w q is equal to y 1 v 1 plus v w divided by y 2. So, that can be written. So, <coughs> well so, if we bring this q common here, let me write it in this form here. Say y 1 plus v 1 plus v w and then this q uh, we can write, okay, let us keep rho still here because here also rho okay, okay, discharge will be coming. So, this discharge is nothing but say we can again write this part as y 1 into v 1 plus v w that is what the discharge we are writing here bringing common and then inside this will be say 1 by that means q we are bringing out this q is nothing but this expression and then here it will be 1 by y 2 minus 1 by y 1 ok. Well, and as we can see very clearly that this term and this term is same. So, we can just because we are writing for discharge only. So, this will be square. So, this can be written as half of g y 1 square and 1 minus y 1 square by y 2 square is equal to this. Now, we can write y 1 square and then we can write here as <coughs> say v 1 plus v w square. Uh, then within bracket we are putting say 1 by y 2 minus 1 by y 1. Now, let us see how we can further simplify this expression here that is the v 1 plus v w is nothing but c. So, from that we can put the value here as c square say y 1 square and this y 1 square we can cancel and then we can just rewrite this expression in a simple form like that <coughs> c square we have already replaced this part that means this we are writing as c this one this is nothing but c. So, putting that what we can write c square is equal to say half of g half of g then we can write say y square y 1 square minus y 2 square that we can write y 1 plus y 2 into y 1 minus y 2 and this is divided by y 1 square. And then this the denominator part we can write say y 1 minus y 2 divided by y 1 
y2. That means this part. This is become y1, y2, then y1 minus y2. So, this is coming here and this is becoming y square, uh, y2 square, then this y1, y2 square minus y1 square that we are writing as this, uh, I mean this one, say y1, y2 and y1 plus y2. Okay. Now, from here what we can do, this is equal to half of g, then we can write y2 by y1. <coughs> So, this y1 and this y1 is getting cancelled and we can write this as y2 by y1. y2 by y1, y2 by y1 into say uh, it will be y1 plus y2 that will be the expression and we can of course further simplify from this part. Uh, you can see that our target is always to get it the expression in terms of root over g y and then whether we can have it in further simplified form. So, c square this is equal to uh, we can bring one y from here one from one y one from here. So, it is equal to say g y one one y one we are bringing from here and then the other part we are writing in a different way say half we are writing here and this y2 by y1 is there y2 by y1 and then as one y1 we have brought here this will be 1 plus y2 by y1 well. So, uh, that is the expression we are getting and as you can see that uh, oh, this will be y1 ok. <coughs> so, c square is equal to this part then if we just try to take c then we will be getting c is equal to root over g y 1, then root over say half of y 2 by y 1 and 1 plus y 2 by y 1. Well, now in this expression normally if we refer to our earlier uh, diagram this say y2 will not be known to us because it is coming this wave is coming and then y1 will be known to us of course. So, to get the value of c then uh, say generally we are getting the expression in terms of uh, y2 by y1 and here it is z y1 and this y2 we need to know in many cases. So, this is y2 oh sorry uh, this is this should have been y2 square by y1 square yes uh, we are taking common y1 square here and as such it will be y2 square by y1 square and this is y2 square by y1 square right. And uh, uh, that is why we are getting this expression in this form like uh, that one uh, this one and so uh, this is coming in this form well fine. So, uh, that way c is equal to root over g y1 and this expression we are getting in terms of y2 by y1 and this is the expression normally we use for computing surge. Okay. Surge means uh, celerity in surge and uh, then this help us in uh, various in solving various numerical problems small numerical problems we can solve by using this particular expression. Well, at minute, it will be here. Expression for C to Hegel continuity and momentum equation. What are the only edge of the That's a homoic man going to class. What? Thirty-nine question. No. That's a thirty-nine. Man, I will keep on going. It's a bis minute. Problem coil to no homo good to tell problem to my body. Do no spin it as another no.
step soli ase nai solana soli ase mun hoko noi ni mun aloman ta mos ase thik ase let us take a uh, problem typical problem in fact we will not we will not be solving the problem as such but we will just show how the steps need to be followed and how we can get the result so the problem suppose it is like that that water flows in a rectangular channel at a depth of 2 meter with a velocity of 1 meter per second well say this is the channel and here water is flowing first i am drawing by dotted line is flowing uh, with a depth of 2 meter, this depth is 2 meter, this is a typical problem taken from the book of Rangaraju uh, open channel flow. So, this is a depth is 2 meter and the velocity of flow is 1 meter per second. Well, and if discharge in the channel is suddenly trivial, what will be the depth of flow? So, here it was the depth of flow. Suppose, in the discharge, if we suddenly trivial then what will be the depth of flow suppose depth of flow is increasing like that and this will in fact continue to increase this will continue to increase this will continue to increase and then wave is moving in this direction and after some time the depth will be increasing now here this is in fact our say we can put as y2 and this is our y1 of course we can write either way also and then velocity here is say v1 velocity here is v2 and then wave velocity let us put as vw then how we can write the continuity equation and momentum equation for this case and what we know here is the depth y2 and this v2 is known velocity is 1 meter per second and depth is say 2 meter so that part is known and other things are not known and what we are knowing the discharge what was earlier flowing is just triple so this discharge what we will be getting here y1 v1 say considering unit width what we will be getting y1 v1 that will be three time of that of the say y2 v2 well so how we can write the uh, continuity equation again to first make it steady what we can do to make it steady we can apply a velocity opposite to this vw so we will be applying here vw and then if we apply vw what will be the velocity here ultimately this velocity will be changing to say v1 minus vw after applying this one and this will be changing to this velocity will be changing to v2 minus vw well and then continuity equation we can write say v1 minus vw into y1 is equal to v2 minus vw into y2 so uh, that is what we can write the continuity equation now here we can put the value of v2 and y2 so what we can write that this is nothing but say v2 is equal to 2 so 2 sorry v2 is equal to 1 1 minus vw into 2 so this equation will give us some information then we can write the momentum equation we can write the momentum equation say <clears throat> so momentum equation can be written as say half of well let me give a number to this equation say this equation is 1 then momentum equation is equal to half of rho g say y1 square minus y2 square is equal to rho v2 minus vw here this is the velocity then we are getting y2 and I mean this part is actually the discharge and then it is v2 minus v1 that is what we are getting and then this expression also we can simplify simplify means we can put the value like half of say rho g y1 square minus y2 square means 4 this is equal to rho uh, <coughs> we can write this as rho then v2 minus vw that we can again write as say v2 was our 1 minus vw and this uh, y2 is already known to us so this will this is 2 so this 2 depth is we got the depth as sorry we got the depth as 2 meter so that we can put here 
say 2 and then this v2 minus v1 again this we can write as 1 minus t1. Now, this is say equation 2. Well, that what information we have, we have a relationship between what information we have that you can refer to the slide, we have one information like that v1 y1 which is the discharge, which was the discharge after the charge is coming that is v1 y1. This is the actual discharge what is coming here and this discharge is triple or three times of that v2 y2. So, we can write it like that v1 y1 is equal to say three time of v2 y2 and this value we can have that is equal to 3 into say 1 is the velocity into the depth 2. So, this is equal to 6. So, uh, that way we can have I am just writing the numerical value not writing the unit here. Uh, so, this is one expression and then we have this expression and solving these expressions we can get ultimately the value of y1 because our target is to know the value of y1. And so, if we know this value of y1, our uh, problem is solved. And to get the value of v1, we have this equation. Say this is one equation, and then here, of course, we have this unknown vw, and this is one equation where we have this uh, unknown vw. So, vw and y1 are the unknown that we can solve uh, by um, uh, trial and error method, and we can get, say, y1 is equal to 2.5. 5 meter. This is just a solved problem already in the book uh, of Rangarazu and just I am taking here just to show how this search problem can be solved. Well, then we will be taking up the next topic rather the equation of unsteady flow. Well, well so equation of unsteady flow uh, that we know that already we have discussed uh, some of the equations of unsteady flow when we were discussing our earlier discussion on say a governing equation of open channel flow. Uh, for unsteady state, we were discussing about the continuity equation. The continuity equation that as we know it is say del A del T plus del Q del X is equal to 0 that we could get. And this of course, we can write as say del A del T plus this Q, if it is Q is written as A into V, this can be written as say A del V del X plus V del A del X is equal to 0. Well, so here I am not taking up again this uh, continuity equation that uh, you can refer or rather we will be knowing by referring to our earlier classes. And then the two governing equations are required basically for solving the problem of unsteady flow. And then one of the most popular equation, of course, continuity equation is there, then another equation that we take is the equation of motion. And this can be, of course, uh, we use momentum principle or energy principle to get this equation of motion and in, for some case we use say. Uh, continuity and momentum equation in couple for solving the problem. Sometimes we use continuity and energy equation for solving the problem depending on the situation where suppose energy is energy loss is there, there we go for momentum uh, uh, couple uh, continuity momentum couple. So, that way these considerations are there. Of course, in this class we are not going for all those details, but we will be just discussing the equation of motion that was uh, given that was first deduced by Barret de Saint Venant and popularly known this equation as Saint Venant equation. And that is say 1879 long back this equation was derived. Well, and this is a dynamic equation of unsteady flow in open channel and for what condition it is the silo water wave equation, silo water wave equation. That means why we are giving this a silo water wave equation because when this equation was derived, this vertical acceleration was considered to be negligible. So, vertical acceleration is negligible and then we should know that for what condition we can apply this and derivation of this equation, not this equation, this is continuity equation, derivation of the equation of motion can be done 
uh, by two approaches. One is energy approach and another is that we can start from Newton's equation of motion. So, by both this approach we can have the derivation and here we will be discussing how by energy approach we can derive the equation in a simple way. Okay? And then let us see what is the energy equation say if this is the flow and this is going like that. <coughs> well, let me take some space because we will have to write here. Say this is section 1 and section 2. So, section 1 and 2. Well, in this section 1 and 2, let us take a small length let us take a small length and let us write this as say, as this small let us write this as say del x this length is and datum is here datum is here so this depth is say z1 and this depth is say z2 that is the elevation head up to the bed and then up to this depth this is y1 we are considering slope to be small that is why we are not writing y1 cos theta or those term we are writing straight way it is y1 and then here this energy is v square by twice z v1 square by twice z energy head up to that point and then here in the second section section 2 this is the y2 and the v square by twice z is suppose that much v square by twice z, v 2 square by twice z. Okay. And then we can draw the energy gradient line as this one, energy gradient line as this one. And there is definitely some energy loss, this we refer as. So, when we draw it parallel to the datum, then we will be finding that there is a head loss. And this head loss we can write as h l. And in fact, this head loss is having two component. One is that, one is that it is friction loss. That is known to us because we did discuss about this friction loss uh, during our discussion of uh, gradually varied flow itself. And but here there will be another component because in case of unsteady flow that uh, local acceleration exist, local acceleration exists. Just to recall briefly, say when we say v, then it is a velocity which is a function of x and t. Of course, in steady flow, it become a function of, it, it, it is not a function of t, but in unsteady flow, this become a function of t. Now, when we talk about, so this change in v, say dv, that we can write as del v del t into dt plus del v del t into sorry del v del x into dx del v del x into dx. Now, if we write that it is a function of x and t, so if we just write it as dv dt dv dt, then we are getting del v del t plus say this <coughs> dx dt. So, d x d t divide into del v del x and this d x d t is nothing but v. So, now perhaps you can recall that we did discuss earlier also d x d t is equal to v del v del x and then this is called local acceleration, this is called convective acceleration. Now, in case of say steady flow, this term is not existing. So, uh, that problem become little simpler, but here we have this term. So, this local acceleration exists, local acceleration exists. So, because a acceleration is there in any, whether it is fluid or in a solid body, if acceleration is there, that is a mass moving and that mass is having some acceleration, means some force is being utilized to have that acceleration, otherwise that acceleration will not be there. So, some force is being utilized to have this acceleration and when some force is being utilized and things are moving, then there must be some work done. Force is applied and it is moving, so some distance has been moved, so some work done will be there and some work done is there means some energy loss is there. So, we can say that in this sort of flow, there is two type of loss, one is H F, another is H A. 
So, this two loss will be there this h a is say x loss due to acceleration. Well, now if we write the energy equation, so writing energy equation <coughs> between say 1 and 2 between 1 and 2 what we can have between 1 and 2 this we can write say z 1 plus y 1 plus p 1 square by twice z is equal to z 2 plus y 2 plus v 2 square by twice z plus h l well plus h l or say we can say loss loss h l ok. Now, this loss as I have explained that let me write here say loss h l is equal to say friction loss friction loss that we write as h f and plus the acceleration loss acceleration loss that is say h a. So, our expression become now of course, in this loss term we need to put these two. So, this is equivalent to s f plus h l already we have written here. Now, we need to have an expression for these two. So, h l is equal to we know that it is h f plus h a. Now, how we can get the s f because friction slope we know that S f if friction slope is S f if friction slope is say S f then we know that S f that is friction loss divided by delta x delta x is equal to S f or we can say that S f the slope into distance S f into this delta x will give us the h f. So, friction slope may be this like that and we can have S f up to certain point h f and then this slope is actually S f and then other part of loss is due to say <coughs> this acceleration. So, that is uh, clear to us that we have discussed earlier also. So, in place of S f by delta x or sorry in place of S f we can write that S f is equal to S f into delta x. Well, now that so for our next acceleration loss is there how we can calculate that. that. So, acceleration del v del t local acceleration del v del t exist here. <coughs> so, if this is the acceleration then if this is the acceleration then the mass suppose if we consider that unit weight of fluid unit weight of fluid then mass is equal to say weight by actually weight by the g so this is here as, as our weight is equal to 1 so this is equal to 1 by g and force utilized force utilized to produce this acceleration force utilized to produced to produce this acceleration that is equal to mass into acceleration mass into acceleration. So, that we can write as 1 by z into del v del t. So, this is what the <coughs> force required uh, a force utilized then this force has worked for how much distance this force is working and then acceleration is being uh, uh, there and then the fluid is moving this mass is moving from here to here. So, the distance of say delta x it is being moving. So, what is the work done and distance move distance moved by this unit mass by this unit weight rather by this unit weight of fluid is equal to delta x that is what we are considering. Therefore, the work done how much work is being 
done work done is equal to 1 by g del v del t into del x del v del t into del x well so this is the work done and what this work done is that is the energy loss energy loss so energy loss is equal to that means 1 by g del v del t into delta x so finally how we can write the heat loss so this this energy loss is nothing but h heat so this energy loss due to acceleration that is the work done due to produce that acceleration and that is the energy loss we can write like that therefore so what we can write that heat loss h l is equal to HF what we can write HF plus HA okay HF plus HA and that HF we can write SF into delta X and then this HA we can write that is the acceleration loss 1 by Z then del V del T into delta X. So putting this value of HL in our equation of energy this one then we can get a simplified expression and then manipulating with that expression finally we will be able to derive a equation of motion and that we will be doing in our next class and then from that we will be also trying to see how this equation can be solved and then by solving this equation how we can get solution to our real life problem of open channel flow. So, thank you very much.